Hello again, it's uh, Paul Beckwith, and I'm continuing discussions about Antarctic sea ice decline. And I'm talking in detail about a paper that Claire L. Parkinson with the um, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center just um, published recently. And the title is A 40-Year Record Reveals Gradual Antarctic Sea Ice Increases Followed by Decreases at Rates Far Exceeding the Rates Seen in the Arctic. So I'm um, continuing my discussions of, of this paper and also the re on the reasons why this is happening. But before I go to this, I must give you my your very rapid um, Shackleton fix. You can tell from the previous video a few minutes ago that he's shifted positions here and he's trying to sleep, but uh, my, my pointer here is, uh, I'm being a bit annoying here. He wants to do his own thing. Hey, Shacky, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. You know, of course, cats hate getting their tummies rubbed then the soles of their feet rub, but uh, the pads, but he's a good sport. Hey, how are you? How are you? Anyway, it's a bit hot. He just wants to uh, take it easy today. So it's, um, it's up to me instead to uh, provide the entertainment today. Okay, so what are the reasons um, for this, um, well, let me show you, let me remind you, um, the key plot here is, this is the Southern Hemisphere. This is the four-year slope, okay? So an av a moving four-year, an average, moving average of the four-year slope. And what you can see is that the, you know, there's a huge decline. You know, the ice was rising here you know, up to 20, up to here, and then there was a huge decline in the slope of the curve. And this is the Northern Hemisphere, more, um, you know, not, not extending as far up or down compared to the, the average, the long-term average. Okay, so the behavior is obviously quite different. So let's talk about some of the reasons that, that have been talked about for this situation, okay? So first of all, you know, in the Arctic, since the late 1990s, the Arctic sea ice cover has been decreasing over the course of the satellite record. Decreases accelerated since the 90s, um, and they're consistent with the rapidly rising um, temperatures over the Arctic, the melting land ice over Greenland um, and Siberia, etc. So, well, snow cover, melt, uh, decreasing snow cover is not mentioned here. Thawing permafrost, longer growing seasons, more coastal erosion, warming oceans. Okay, so it's a consistent picture, but even though the modeled sea ice predictions um, show decreases, the decreases that we've seen are far exceed what the models predict. Okay, so that's, most of you are quite aware of this. I've discussed this quite a bit in videos. Now, Antarctica, the situation in Antarctica is quite different. Okay, the sea ice's extent has increased overall for much of the period since 1978. So these increases have been far more puzzling than the Arctic sea ice decreases and led to, have led to a variety of suggested explanations. So these are some of the explanations. Ties to the ozone hole, 12 and 13 talked about it, references 12 and 13. You can, again, it's open source, you can get the paper, just have a look at it. Uh, so a couple of papers said it's the ice is tied to the ozone hole, and then that was rejected in a couple other papers to follow. Uh, there were ties to the El Nino Southern Oscillation and the Interdecadal Pacific Oscillation and the and or the Amundsen Sea Low. There were ties to basal meltwater from the ice shelves in 18, rejected in 19. Okay, none of these has yet led to a consensus on why the long-term Antarctic sea ice increases occurred. So what I'm arguing is that, uh, you know, over this entire period, the Arctic has been losing sea ice and snow cover and getting darker and darker. So in the summers in the Arctic, 
the uh, it's absor the absorption of shortwave solar radiation is much much greater. So the Arctic's been warming and undergoing Arctic temperature amplification. All fine and dandy, but this means that there's been less need for heat to be transferred from the equator up into the Arctic because the Arctic temperature is warming by itself from the increased absorption. So therefore, and the heat transfer is proportional to that temperature gradient or temperature difference, which is declining between the equator and the North Pole as the Arctic greatly warms. Therefore, more heat goes to the Southern Hemisphere. And this heat went down as far as Australia and caused heat waves and stuff, but the strong circumpolar um, um, jet streams and, and wind around Antarctica kind of isolated Antarctica. You know, they dragged water around and they the combined, you know, ocean currents and air movements around Antarctica, isolated Antarctica. So Australia warmed, but Antarctica didn't. In fact, the temperature gradient increased to Antarctica. That increased the southern annular mode, if you like. Um, the winds around Antarctica, because Coriolis deflexing to the left, those increase of winds pulled sea ice away from the coast of Antarctica, making Antarctic sea ice increase at 1% per decade over most of the record. So what happened, um, and that culminated in a maximum sea ice extent around Antarctica in 2014. Now I'm arguing that the waviness of the jet streams has increased so much that they're not pulling the sea ice away from Antarctica. They're breaking it up, they're making it more slushy, they're impinging on it, they're going in different directions, and therefore Arctic, the Antarctic sea ice is now declining um, precipitously because you know it's formed in the open ocean. It's not in a basin that's surrounded by land like in the Arctic. So let's have a look at, um, let's have a look at that sort of idea. Okay, so if we go to Climate Reanalyzer, you can see the two meter anomaly and you know you can click on this and you can see, look at the configuration here. So the jet streams are not circumventing Antarctica. It's like a ridge has come down in this area causing much, much warmer temperatures than normal up to 20. It's like this is a strong trough in this region and in this region, causing anomalies of minus 10 to minus 20. So the temperature difference between these regions is, is uh, you know, in terms of the, the anomaly, this is, a, this is a very, very cold anomaly. This is a very hot anomaly. There's a large temperature gradient. There's very strong winds across the continent. There's not circumpolar winds, which are pulling that ice extent out. There's these winds which are bringing the ice in all stitched di different directions regionally and locally and cause and you know the stuff is uh, the the um, warm water underneath it is coming up and it's melting it out so it's rapidly on the way out. So let's have a look at Earth Null School to see what's going on and I have five I have six Earth Null School windows open so let me show you what we're looking at here. So I'm looking at air at 250 millibar wind, so the jet streams. And this is, this is today or yesterday, okay? The first image. This one here is September 15, 2014. Okay, then this one here is September 15, 2015. September 15, 2016 and September 5th, 2017 and September 15th, 2018. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. So we're looking at today, essentially, which is, you know, first week of July. Then we're looking at 2014, 15, 16, 17 and 18 in September when the sea ice um, should be maximum. Okay, so what we can see now is these jet streams, you know, are look look the look where the continent is. 
here, and this is where the jet streams are. So some of them are crossing, impinging, etc. We go to 2014, and look at this. The powerful jet streams are a long distance away. There's a lot of space here. There's some motion of air, but it's much weaker. So this is in 2014 when the sea ice extend in Antarctica reached a record maximum. Okay, so again, clearly show this. Okay, so powerful jet streams, but well away. This guy is much weaker here. Now look what happens the next year. So the ice was in, the ice extent was increasing up until this year, and you can um, okay. So now we'll look at the next year when there was a large drop of when the the large collapse of our Antarctic sea ice started. Okay, now look at this. This jet stream is coming very close over it. So obviously the sea ice here is being ripped apart in this region, etc. Then we go to 2016 at the maximum extent. And again, we don't have that open space that we had in, in 2014. Okay, this is, so this is uh, 2016. And then if we go to 2017, same sort of thing. The gap, open gap here is much smaller. And 2018, okay, strong jet streams impinging. Okay, so the nature of the jet streams in the Southern Hemisphere has changed. And I've been talking about this for quite a few years actually. So again, this is the configuration in 2014 when these jet streams around Antarctica kind of isolated Antarctica. So Australia got very warm, but Antarctica stayed very cold and the jet stream speed was enhanced because of Australia was warming up, warming up, Antarctica was still very cold, so the temperature gradient was large, so it created these very, very um, zonal uh, jet streams with uh, some incursions inside but weak and then since then since that maximum in 2014 we have we lose all that space the jet streams are impinging and impacting the the sea ice and you can see it here in 2015 here in 2016 here in 2017 and here in 2018 so basically i think this answers the question as to you know, will this continue in Antarctica? The answer is yes. Both poles are, so, so Antarctica has had nowhere near the, the temperature amplification that the Arctic has had, right? Arctic temperature amplification is a well-known term to most of you watching my videos now because the Arctic is becoming a much darker place. The albedo is dropping. That hasn't been the case with Antarctica but that will start happening. We'll have Antarctica temperature amplification. Um, that phrase is going to become very common, as common as the Arctic temperature amplification phrase. And the Southern Hemisphere, which many people think is much less affected by the huge warming in the Arctic, and that hasn't been the case, of course, because of the teleconnections, you know, we're one planet, one climate system, you know, poles connected to equator, to connected to other pole, but now we're starting to see significant changes in the behavior in Antarctica. And this is going to get amplified moving out. So this is also going to have huge impacts on jet stream configurations, okay? so. Our world is rapidly changing. Our weather patterns are rapidly changing. The transfer of heat from the equator up to the Arctic and the transfer of heat from the equator to Antarctica is changing. Remember that about two thirds of the heat transfer from the equator up to the Arctic is via the atmosphere. About one third is via the ocean. Similar ratios um, apply in the Southern hemisphere. Okay, the huge Arctic changes have impacted not just the Northern Hemisphere, but the Southern Hemisphere as well in terms of extreme weather events. But until a few years ago, say 2014, Antarctica could be considered quite isolated from the rest of the planet because of the very strong um, circumpolar um, jet streams and ocean currents, etc., isolating the cold in Antarctica. Not the case anymore, clearly, since 2014, when the, these jet stream patterns 
you know, which we're well away from the continent. Look at where the continent is. Look at where the pink areas are, well away. The ice is forming here, you know, was maximum. And then now we ha no longer have the case. The pink lines, the jet streams, they impinge all over Antarctica as well. Thanks for listening.